clearly acknowledges that he's an Israelite of Israelites. He's a Hebrew of Hebrews, and therefore he's a Jew of Jews. But when he says um, over and over to beware of the Jews, he is speaking of a particular religious interpretation, right? And a religious interpretation that ultimately denied Moshiach, right? Denied the Messiah. So when we speak about this particular season and we speak about whether we fast or not, right? There's such a thing known as a spiritual fast, right? And you probably have heard me talk about this before where we can fast from anger, right? And, and feast on Jala, fast from worldly anger, fast from worldly doubt and uh, feast on, on Jah's faith. So there's fasting within, within that overstanding. That's the spiritual fast, right? So when we're speaking about afflicting our souls, and, and here's a key point. I didn't get to actually go into this in the parts of the pre-Yom uh, Kippur series, and I want to touch on this right here. Mm-hmm. And I hope that ones have a Melkam Suryet N, which is a Metasebia which is a, a reminder or a memorial, right? A memorial for us because we know that Yeshua HaMoshiach in whom we trust has already fulfilled all of the so-called sacrificial types, right? And we're going to be focusing on Leviticus chapter 16 because Leviticus chapter 16 would be the proper reading and feeding as you can see when you go to you know, the the Suryat Ken. Um, when you go to our website, let's bring this up right here, Rastafari Groundation. Hoping I pray I could, I could put this up within soon time and everything because it's like I and I souls have been afflicted, you know, especially when we recognize in the in the scripture of truth what what is being referred to, right? So it says to afflict our souls. Now, if we look at the Hebrew, which I've done right here, Look at the actual Hebrew. Let me show you this right here. Right? This is the actual Hebrew, right? Just so you can see this right here. This is the actual Hebrew for for um X V I. X is ten, V is five, and I is one. So in the Romantic, that is sixteen, right? And this is the key verse right here. Let's get this verse right here where it says it says, um, and it shall be a statute for uh, so forever to you in the seventh month and on the tenth day of the month ye shall afflict your souls and shall do no manner of work, occupational labor. The homeborn, right, the homeboy or the stranger, right, I meaning the Gentiles or others that sojourn among you, right? Now, if you look into the Hebrew over here, it says right here, um, what is this? Uh, what, te, te anu, uh, te anu, te anu, anu, ani, ani, like ben oni, ben ani, te anu, et naf, naf, uh, nafish, nafish, or nafshi, nafshi te kem. Nafshitekem, nafshitekem, right? Nafshitekem. Here it basically says to afflict, right? The soul. But what, in what sense, right? Now the footnote right here, right? Let's go to the footnote right here. Here you can see it says, uh, ye shall afflict your souls. Now they say the Jews who call themselves Jews or modern Judaism, right? From the Western Gentile you know, whether Ashkenazi or Sephardim, right? Because there's also the question of Moshiach. Do they receive our black Lord and Savior? So here is a break, right? Because for us as uh, Meshahawiyan or in the Moshiach, uh, atonement is fulfilled in the, in, in the, through the Moshiach. For them, they are so-called looking for Moshiach or looking for Christ, right? But you have to be very careful because even um, the one known as Satan was an anointed cherub. He was anointed, 
All right. So this is why you see what's going on. But they can't say his name. They can't say his name. And they don't have faith in his name. But it says, ye shall afflict your soul. So they say this phrase, when used in scripture, it denotes fasting. And that's according to E and N, some of their uh, Jewish, uh, European Jewish uh, Rambam ra rabbis. But you have to recognize that this all basically came out of us. That there were so-called black Jews who refused right, the light or the illumination of Moshiach. Just like there are ones who refuse the true light, right, in the person of the King of Kings, in the person of Kedemawi Hala Selassie, even among the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, how interesting is that? That's another proof that we are that people, right? Come to your own, and it's what? Your own, that many of your own, not all of your own. There's always a remnant. So this also speaks to the remnant. So what does it mean when it says to afflict the soul? Does afflicting the soul means fasting? Is that the proper uh, interpretive? Is that the proper interpretation that afflicting the soul is to refer to uh, mundane fasting, like not eating food? I guess for, if you're teaching children on a certain level, perhaps, you know, if you're just teaching children, but for us who are mature, right, in the Moshiach, right, it means much more, right, it means much more than, you know, eating and drinking, right, the kingdom of heaven is more than eating and drinking, the word already says that, and what I find is that Hawari Apollos, Paul, the great apostle, also touched on this particular issue, right, even though he came from amongst the Jews, and we say the Jews, Right. We're saying that religious establishment It's like saying the orthodoxy. Right. He came from amongst the orthodoxy. He was he was of the orthodoxy. Right. And he was blind. Right. Until his conversion. Right. Until he was brought into the true light. And then he had that that mega. Oh, because he already had the basic knowledge. Remember what Yeshua HaMoshiach said to the Pharisees that they had the keys of the kingdom, they had the keys, but they did not enter in. And what were they doing? They were preventing others from entering in. And there was ones like Nicodemus, right? And Nicodemus, well-meaning as he was, he still went along with the establishment, right? He, he still was, he still had an establishment view. You know, you're part of a, a ruling clique like the Pharisees were. The Pharisees would represent the religious you know, the religious um, authorities, you know, like those mega pastors and preachers today. You see what I'm saying? And they're all part of a cabal, right? But the cabal, the kabel that they have received is not Yeshua HaMoshiach. They have not received his teaching. They have received another gospel, right? So what does afflicting our souls, does it mean just fasting? That question came to mind when I was asked by ones and ones, you know, am I going to fast? Are you fasting? So forth and so on. And uh, my answer was that we're not fasting as the world fasts, right? But my answer was a little more specific than that, of course. But I began to think on this subject matter and say, hmm. We really didn't touch on this squarely, right? We need to squarely touch on this. And when I say squarely touch on this, according to the scriptures, right? And according to the scripture of truth. This is why Zephaniah 3 and 9 and 10 says, for then he would turn to the peoples, what a pure language. So when we look in the royal Amharic in the Mets of Kedus, right? For these particular verses, what was it? Verse 29, verse 29 and 30 are connected. So let's go to Leviticus, right? Because Leviticus chapter 16 speaks on the day of atonement, right? Christ, Moshiach, right? Ha Moshiach, right? As high priest, right? And the sacrifice, the real sacrifice, the real Meshwa'it, 
right? The sacrifice one time for all time. Then there's a Hebrews reference in the parenthesis, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 to 14. Now, Hebrews is one of the books we read the entire book for Yom Kippur, right? We read the entire book for Yom Kippur. In fact, if you, uh, let's see, look over here. Let's see if we can uh, crop this over here, right? And cut this out. This is the weekly Torah portion reading and feeding that you'll find that Rastafari groundation right here. Let's copy this and let's paste this here so we can look at this, um, examine this in its, more of its fullness right here. So here, here, here's what we have right here. Let's move this. Okay, let us uh, get that window, get these windows back here. Okay, we're not going to use that right now. Let's just move this down right here. Move this over so we can reposition all of this. Move this over right here and give thanks to uh, Wendem Yifti. I mean, Wendem, uh, well, Wendem Yifti, all the Wendem Moch. But for this art right here, this particular art right here, uh, Lija Zawadi, right? Excellent and a beautiful art, right? That really depicts some of the stages of what Teshuvah, right? The Mameles is all about, right? The real Aliyah, right? So here we have this right here where we have uh, this week's uh, Torah portion, right? This week's Torah portion right here. So you can click on that. And go into a little more detail right there, but this is the real, this is the real reason for the season, all right? All right, there's the real reason for the season, all right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, He is our High Priest, all right? He has fulfilled those types and those similes. So when we look at the word atonement, it's very interesting. We need to study the word atonement now. We utilize the Schofield. There's, there's those that try to clown the Schofield. Now, Schofield as an individual, we're not defending Schofield as an individual. We're saying in this particular book, because it has the footnotes and the references that explain scripture within scripture, and the whole thing about the counterfeit rapture thing is not found in this Bible. There's a little verse that basically points to that, but this theology that people talk about and point to CS or whatever, CI, Schofield, is not found here. Right. And then when we look at some of the other beliefs of those who have that belief, they are um, antipodal. Right. Or antipodal. They're on the other polar reality. They're not they're not in the same mind. Right. With uh, the king of kings and his Christ. So this is one another reason why we utilize this particular scripture. So we'll, we'll touch on that as that is necessary. But let's look at this verse right here. Verse um. Uh, verse uh, 16, I mean, verse chapter 16, verse uh, 29, 29 and 30, right? And it says, and this shall be a statute forever to you. And in that in the seventh month, which this is on the 10th day of the month, ye shall do what afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or homeborn, a homeboy, one of your own country, or a stranger that sojourneth among you. There's a colon there. Verse 30 goes on and says, For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to do what? To cleanse you, that ye, y'all, we, I and I and we may be clean, from all your sins before yod hey weh hey before Yahweh. Then 31 says, it shall be a Sabbath, a Shabbat. So now here's what makes this particular 2014 very interesting because the Day of Atonement is on, is on the actual seventh day. So we see another example of the two sevens, as it were, the two sevens clashing, right? These two sevens, right? Another example is on the seventh, Right. And this also the seven is a is a, is a uh, uh, Shiva, Shabba, Shava, Shabba, Seba. Right. This is what the sevens mean. Right. It's a covenant like an oath. And it shall be a Sabbath of what rests to you. And ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. So we find afflict your soul again 
in verse uh, 31. Right? In verse 31, a Sabbath of solemn rest, a Sabbath of Sabbath. Right? So we have a Sabbath of Sabbath on the Sabbath day in this blood moon prophecy fulfillment time. Some understand the double phrase as rest for the body and soul, others as rest in a superlative degree. Right? A statue forever to, now they say to fast. So the Jewish when we say Judaic Jewish, we're saying in the sense of the the priesthood, the 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 ruling the ruling religious elite, right? Those who had the scriptures and interpreted the scriptures, those who were guiding the people. Like when one goes to these churches, they they carry the Bibles, but they really don't read it and really study it judiciously. Because if they did, they would have questions, and many of these um, hired shepherds. Right. Would become offended. Right. And many have become offended when once came to them with questions. A statute forever because they're hired shepherds. Right. They're shepherds for hire. They're pastors and 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 profits. Right. Profits, not profet. Right. Pro F.I.T. They put the people in the fit. Right. So they say to fast on the day of atonement. But it does not say to fast. They say, well, it's interpreted to mean fast. Right. But what it really means, we're going to learn from the King of Kings, Metz of Kedus. We're going to learn from the Book of the Seven Seals, right? From the Amharic Bible of His Majesty, right? They say, even when the temple no longer stands, the Sabbath of solemn rest and fasting must still be observed. So now the whole world or the world of Jewry, right? And others will say that, well, afflicting the soul must mean fasting. That it would make better sense afflicting the body, if you if you overstand, right? Afflicting the body would mean fasting. So there's nowhere that it has fast there. Does this mean that ones cannot fast? Ones can choose to fast, but then when you make it a doctrine, right, or even dogmatically a teaching, and the scripture does not implicitly state that, and further study of it really gives a clearer. A, a, a Barit Hadash, a fulfillment of that. You know, when the, when Paul talks about we should check ourselves, right? We should mourn rather than, than, than laugh and everything. You know, we should check ourselves if we think we're standing, you know, check our heads, check our ras. It's interesting right here, because let's just give you this right here when we go to the, to the Amharic, right? Here we got right here. This is the verse. This is, um, right? Orit ze lewawiyan. All right, let's bring this closer right here. It says, um, verse 29 and 30 says, Yehim yezalalem sarat yehun lachu, bezih ken tenetz uzen mas tes reya yehon lachu khalina, be sebatenyaw rakawaruma, be as renyaw ken rasachuhun as chen. What? Interesting right there. It doesn't use the word nefs, but it used the word ras. Rasachehun as chenquat. As chenquat. Right? In other words, to um, stress, in a sense, our heads, ourselves. Because ras can mean head, and ras also means self. It says, ye agar lijim be nantimekakela yetek emet em in gedas hulu. Atis rubet be egziabi harima feet ka hat yatachu hulu tenes alachu, right? From your sin singular. Now sin, hat yatachu hu, right? Your hat yat, hat yat, you're missing the mark, right? The systemic anomaly, right? The missing of the mark from the entirety of it, right? Because that fallen nature, that old nature, Right. And in Xiabia's presence, you will be clean. He will, you know, you'll be clean. Right. Right. From from all. Right. Let's go right here. Oh, guys, click that back on right there. All right. Then, then we go to the next verse. Those, those are the two verses there. All right. 30, 29 and 30. Now, here is verse uh, 31. It says, Talak Senbet Yehon La Chukwal. In other words, it's a great Sabbath. Arasachuhunim. Tawar dalachu, yezalalem maser atanau, 
right? So it says, Arasachuhunim, once again, Arasachuhunim, your Ras, right? And your Ras, collectively speaking to you all, Tawardalachu, you will humble your Ras, humble your head, humble yourself. So we have over here, let's bring this down, we have Rasachuhun Aschenkwat, right? Aschenkwat. Right, to stress or to make anxiety, make tight your head, yourself. Right? That's, that's the afflicting of the soul, afflicting of the self. In other words, examine ourselves. And here it says to humble, right? Because this is a great Sabbath, Talak Senbet Yehon La Chihual, for you all, for we all, Rasad Chihunim, our head, Singular, our collective head, because speaking to Israel as one, as one unit, it's not really even speaking to us so much individually. There's an individual response ability, the ability to respond, the ability to receive. What do we receive? Rasachuhunim tawardalachu, right? Yezalalem serat nau, right? So forever is a statute forever. It's a serat, it's a seder. All right now, why is that important? Well, that's important because there are two different, there's three different things. One, it does not use the word on uh, nefeshikem, right? It doesn't use the word nefs. And the word nefs is the Afro-Shemitic word, you know, and being, it's, it's there in them hark. We have the same root Shemitic words in them hark. That also proves that we can't say that them hark and that on that level, is um, so-called just Hamite, right, or Kamite. But there's a lot of Hamitic terms that are also in Hebrew. But we, we, let, let's let's move past that for a moment. The point is that the word Aras, like in the Hebrew Arosh, right, the, the, the Hebrew word Arosh equals, or the modern Hebrew saying Arosh. Really, if you read the letters in Hebrew, it's really Ras. It's Aras, right, the same word. Arash Aleph Sheen, right? R A S, or you could say R A S H, right? But R A S, basically Arash, Arash, Ras, 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 right? So Aras both means our head, physically speaking, but in the language it is used to refer to our sense of self. Like let's say Arase, 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 Aras. A, ra say is myself, right? Or it could be my head, right? But it's used in the language in the sense of self, right? So this is about checking ourselves. It's about humbling ourselves, right? On a certain level, it's about stressing ourselves in the, uh, in the context of how Huario Paulos, how Paul, when he talks about how we are to sorrow, Right, how we are to sorrow. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. Let's go to this. And so do we fast? I would say spiritually fast. See, as you can fast from eating food, right? But what are you feasting on? There has to be a balance, right? We can fast from, from negative emotion, fast from our own way of thinking, right? Our, our, our own mind and feast on Yah's way. Right. So there are spiritual levels of it. See, where the priesthood kept them was kept them under a religio. Right. Kept them under a religio. And Huari Apollos began to realize that as well. Right. Kept them under a, a religio. Let's see if we see in the it's interesting. Right. Um, it's interesting right here. Right. This is why. Oh wow, look at this. Look, look what look what the Holy Spirit has shown us in Isaiah 58 and 3. It says, Wherefore have we fasted, say they. So so they say we fasted, but who told them to fast? Yahweh's word didn't say to fast, he said to afflict your soul. Right? Whether you want to look at it in the Hebraic sense, right? And the Hebraic sense right here is um uh, to, 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 uh, to anu, to anu et, uh, nafishetekem, right? Nafishetekem, right? Or whether you look at it in the sense of rasachuhun asachenquat, 
right? Or rasachuhun tawardalach, right? But in order for it to be humbled, you first have to look at it tightly. You have to look at it in the context of, of his will, of his moshiach, right? So we are looking at our souls and looking at ourselves, right? In the context of what Yeshua has already, his already fulfilled sacrifice for us, right? Because he is our high priest. See, this is the key. This is the key qualifier that separates us from the, the so-called Jews who call themselves Jews. Although the foundation, the groundation be similar, there is a divergence, right? There's a divergence of, of opinion. They say Yeshua is not the Moshiach, right? We say he is. So therefore, what's the difference? Well, it's how we view him, but it's also based on this fasting, right? So let's, let's think about this fasting right here. When we go to Isaiah 50, Isaiah 58 and 3, we have the Israelites, right? We have the Israelites saying to Yahweh, right? We have our people saying to Yahweh, haven't we fasted? You know, when people say, I've, we've done everything the Lord wants us to do. Haven't we done what the Lord wanted us to do? Right? And this is all connected with the ethical instructions right here. Verse 3. It says, Cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew, show my people their transgression, and the house of Yaakob their chatiyat. Right? So this is what, right? This is what we are to do, according to the prophet. It says, yet they seek me daily. They, they seek Yahweh daily, right? They, you know, they seek him daily, you know, the religious folks and stuff like that, and delight to know my ways, right? And they delight to know his ways. As a nation that did, that performed Zidic, Zadik, righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance, the sarat. Remember what the sarat is. It doesn't say fasting anywhere here. It doesn't say fasting anywhere in Leviticus chapter 16. We say the sages, right? The sages said it. You know, the religious authority said it. You know, like we say, well, this is, I grew up in the church. This is what the pastor said. This is what the, you know, what they used to say in the churches. But then you start reading the Bible for yourself and say, wait, it doesn't say that. And you start to study it deeply and say, it still doesn't, it still doesn't say that, you know, it doesn't refer to that anywhere. But now here is the condemnation of it, right? From Yahweh's own mouth through the prophets. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. No justice, no peace, right? They take delight in approaching to Elohim. They take a lot delight in, in, in a show of religiousness. Now we can see how Yeshua HaMoshiach, how he rebuked, right? How he rebuked the, um, the Pharisees about their, their show, right? You know, how they did things for show, you know, how they dress, how they extended their, you know, the borders of their garments and all of that and said long prayers and everything. Verse three says, wherefore have we fasted? Say they. And thou seest not. Well, a, a reason why he, he didn't see this is because he didn't say for you, for us to do this. He says to afflict our soul, right? Right? To, to, uh, to, to, to anu, right? To anu, to anu et, uh, nefeshek, uh, nef, uh, Let me look at this right here again, because we have to get all these pointings, or well, actually, naf, Na, na fish taken, na fish taken, right? Te anu et na fish taken, right? Based on that pointing right now, we'll, we'll get into the proper pointing of it, but so those who are on that level of understanding can understand we're speaking about your souls, right? He says your souls. He says te anu, right? Now it's interesting. We look at the word, um, anu, ani, like Bain Oni was the name of Benjamin. Before Benjamin, before the father changed his name, because Rahel was the wife that Jacob loved, and and she had one last child, and that one last child was Benoni. She named him Benoni because of her suffering, what she was suffering in the contest with her sister, right? You know, for her suffering and everything. And then she passed away on the road, right? And then the father changed the name of Benoni, right? Benoni to Benyamin, and it was the son of my suffering. 
Now, it wasn't that she was fasting, was it? Was she going around fasting when she was suffering? She wasn't eating? <laughs> no, it wasn't saying that. It was her sense of self, how she was looking at herself in this competition with her sister. Right? That's what it was about. And, and really it was, it, it was not even their fault. It was really their, their earth, the earthly father's fault. Right? It was your earthly father's fault, not the heavenly father's fault. But here in 58 and 3, it says, they say, wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou takest no knowledge. This is what the people are saying to Yahweh. Behold, in the day of your fast, right? He says, in the day of your fast. Notice how Yahweh says, this is your fast. Y'all have chosen to do this. I did not command you to fast. And, and a challenging of the so-called Jewish, so-called rabbis to prove where it says fast. They're going to use all this sophistry. Say, well, you know, if you could look at it like that. And so, but specifically, Yahweh does not say fast. And if Yahweh wanted to fast, he tells us to fast. Right? But he says right here, good. If that's how you see afflicting your soul, stopping eating, since your soul is most manifest in your eating, right? You know, your physical eating. Okay. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. In other words, in a day of the fast, when we say, well, this is the time for repentance and this is a time for, you know, we have a religious, acting religious on the outside, right? But we are basically about our own pleasures, about our own things, exacting all your labors. Like you're doing your labors, your business exactly. You know, you know, contract agreement, negotiation, you better keep this and that. But then... You say you're in Yah's way, you're in covenant with Yahweh, and you're not keeping his covenant and agreement. But then you say, oh, but I fasted, but you don't see the Bible, all I've done. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Right? Ye fast for strife. In other words, you turn on your plate, right? But then you take your anger out on your brother man or your sister woman or someone else for, for strife and debate. And to smite with a fist of wickedness because you're not eating now now you'll get violent oh man i'm hungry man you better leave me alone i'm fat that's what christ says you know how they disfigure their faces to make it seem like oh we're so religious yeah we, we, you know we so really just right we're really just really 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 you know yahweh says you when we when we do that we're unjust he says behold ye fast speaking of us collectively for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day. What, what is he saying? He said, we shall not fast as we do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Because what does it say? It says that we should humble ourselves, right? It was to check ourselves. Even Hawaii Apollos, very interestingly enough, right? He speaks about that, about how we should sorrow. Right, we should sorrow in a certain way. How we should sorrow? I'm gonna look up the verses right here and get a couple of them. But it's most of it is it's a New Testament verses where he speaks about how we should sorrow. Right, you know, he speaks a lot about sorrow, and that is connected right with that same sense of of atonement. Right, because the whole the whole fulfillment of atonement is to be found in Yeshua. Or it's not to be found at all, right? Because he says right here, Romans 9 and 2, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, right? Um, he says, and I wrote this same to you, least when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice. In other words, those who he was guiding, they were doing their own things, you know, like we're fellowshipping with ones, but, and they say, yes, they're doing, you know, we, we should be together, but they, well, when are we all going to meet up? But you can tell even from a distance, they're doing their own thing. So when, when we do come together, he says, I should have sorrow of them of, of whom I ought to rejoice. I should rejoice, right? And take joy that ones are learning and growing, but really something is going wrong, right? And, and, and it's because they're going after their own mind. Right. And their own will, he says, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. Right. Then he goes, 
he goes down further in Second Corinthians 2 and 7, so that contrary wise, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Least perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Right. You know, sometimes we'll so-called help one another and, you know, in Christ's sake. But then we might be a little bit too pharisaical. Right. And we allow that one. Yes, they did such and such, but you're going over. Right. So you want them to be swallowed up in that. Right. Because maybe like Christ says, take the beam out your own eye before you try to take the speck out of your brother's eye. See, this is how we examine our ras, our head, our self. Second Corinthians six and 10, he says, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Right, because we've humbled ourselves, we've humbled our soul. Rasachuhun tawardalachu, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? As poor, but many are becoming rich. Right, as having nothing, you know, what do we got? Yet possessing all things, because we have the one who possesses. All things in heaven and on earth. Second Corinthians seven and nine. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorrow. Sorry, he's rejoicing. In other words, he's he's teaching it. His 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 um his his uh children in Christ in the Moshiach because they were so young. They were still newborns. You know, like some are born big. They they just got saved and now they want to run off and do their own thing. Right. Or such and such, you know, uh, uh, take the beam out your own eye before you try to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Right. Some say, oh, you talking about me? Well, if you receive it, then you receive it. It's the spirit talking about you. The Ruach HaKodesh. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrow or sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Boom. Uh uh. There it goes. But that ye did what? Ye sorrowed. You were sorry for you afflicted your soul. Leviticus 16, 29 to 31. Right? That ye, that ye sorrowed to do what? Just to be sorrow over much? So you just swallowed up and sorrow? No. Sorrow to what? Repentance. Right? Let's back up right here. You see that word? There it goes right there. Repentance. That ye sorrowed to repentance. Right? That the sorrow brought about repentance. The sorrow brought about the the true purpose of the gospel, right? The true purpose of the gospel, it brought about repentance, right? To that return to his way and out of your own way. To his thought and out of your own thought. To his mind and out of your own mindlessness that you want to call a mind. Right, but you're not minding his things. You're minding your own things. You're exacting your own labors. You know, I want to smite with the fist of wickedness, right? Um, this is why he says in verse five, once again, Isaiah 58 and five, he says, is it such a fast that I have chosen? Is it a fast that Yahweh has chosen? You see, so do we fast? We, do we fast as the Jews fast? The Jews who call themselves Jews, you know who we're talking about. Right? This is not a point of technicality. We're the line of the tribe of Judah, so we don't know. Right? But, but, but overstand, Jew in its overall sense is referring to the religious establishment. Just like today, we have a religious establishment of so-called Judaism that denies the line of the tribe, the bloodline of Yehuda. Right. Both I and I king and we, the once lost, now found sheep of the house of Israel, the black sheep of the family. Verse five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? I always wondered about this verse right here. I used to read this in Isaiah 58. What was he saying? The people were saying they were fasting. And then Yahweh says, he who be who he be, as I find majesty says, is the fast that I chose? Did I choose for you to do this? Is You know, like people will decide to do their own thing. This happens in ministry, right? Because we, we was going to talk about getting our, organizing our ministry, you know, organizing our ministry to accomplish, you know, uh, Selassie's labor, you know, uh, uh, organizing ourselves, right? According to the churchical, um, the, the foundation, according to the groundation, according to his blueprint. According to the scripture, not according to what this one does, what that one does, what our own funny, strange ideas, worldly ideas. But I always wondered about this. 
right? Now, hallelujah, I, I, I see this in its perfect sense. When one say, well, are you going to fast? Are, 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 are you fasting at this time? And I'm like, uh, I, I thought about it too. You know, I thought about it. Well, you know, um, am I going to fast? So my response is, it's a spiritual fast, right? It's a spiritual fast, right? Leviticus says to afflict the soul, thy soul, right? And, and I and I soul is afflicted all these days, right? Leading up to the day, right? Especially when you're ministering. It's like what Paul says right here, Second Corinthians 7 and 9. Now, I rejoice, not that I made, that you were made sorry, sorry, right? But that ye sorrow to repentance. So his joy was that one sorrow was leading to a repentance, to a real change of mind in conformity to the son, to the, to Christos, to ha Moshiach, bain ha Elohim. Hallelujah. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, after a manner that's in accordance with Elohim, with Ha Elohim, with the Ruach HaKodesh, with the spirit of truth, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Why right? we have not damaged you? We have not, oh, but you hurt my feelings. Uh, uh, that's not me, that's his word, right there, the same word I stand on. Right, the next verse says this, 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, for godly sorrow, right, sorrow that is in accordance with his spirit and his will, right, the spirit of truth, worketh repentance, godly sorrow, right, repentance to what? To salvation, to Yeshua, to Madan, not to be repented of. You see, so when you... When there is a godly sorrow, a sorrow that's based on the word of truth, the spirit of truth, that worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, right? You know, <laughs> but the sorrow of the world, right? Getting caught up in this worldliness, the seclorumness, it worketh death. And I think this is where a lot of us have been, and I see that there's some of y'all are there. You're like in this double minded kind of state, you know, trying to have the sorrow of the world. Right. And then also recognizing the superiority of the godly sorrow that worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But you still are like sorrow of the world. So it's like it's, it's like you're, you're on the fence. This is why many people get defensive. You know, they get defensive, right? You see, in humbling ourselves, we can really look at ourselves at this time and receive his grace in the Moshiach. Verse 11, the next verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. For behold, look and see this self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, right? That we sorrowed after what God what the father really approved of, right? What he really has approved of his way, right? And not just, right? And not just our way or not our way, right? Because our way, right? Our way basically is, 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 is not just, right? I mean, that's just straight, straight up right there. Our way is not just. It's not just at all, right? His way is just, right? His way is righteous. Verse 11, 7, 11. Here's your 7, 11. Second Corinthians 7, 11. 7, 11, right? What does 7, 11 says? 7, 11 says, so behold, look and see this self same thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, right? After Elohim's way, right? What carefulness it wrought in you. When you sorrow after his way, you become careful, you become conscious. This is how you truly become ha Moshiach conscious, right? Careful, what carefulness, not carelessness, right? What carefulness as redeemed Beta Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites, not carelessness, right? What carefulness it wrought in you, yea. What clearing, right? What clearing of yourselves, what clearing of yourselves, yea. What indignation, Yea, what fear, 
yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Right? Um yeah, I mean, there's, okay, there's, all right, all right. The Holy Spirit want me to just conclude on this part right here. Um, chapter 58, once again, Isaiah, chapter 58. So it's 58 and 5 says, is it such a fast that I have chosen? This is all connected, right, with this time and this season, to fast or not to fast, right? You know, <laughs> don't be so fast. Hold on for a moment. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul, right? It is to bow down his head. It is to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloths and ashes under him. Is it just to bow down his head as a, as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? He's asking questions here. Wilt thou call this a fast? Are you, are we going to call, this is how we to afflict our soul to fast, not to eat for a couple of hours, right? Right? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to Yahweh? This is what Yahweh is asking through the prophet Yeshayahu, the prophet Isaiah, concerning this day, this time, Yom Kippur, Astesurio, Suriyat Ken, the day of atonement. Is not this the fast that I have chosen. He's asking again. This is not the fast that I have chosen. Right? To loose the bands of wickedness. To loose the bands of wickedness. Right? And that means the wickedness in our own heads and hearts. Right? Recognize that. So many people could, I could see the wickedness in my brother or sister a mile away, but can you see it in your own head and heart? Hmm? Can you? Oh, oh, you don't want to see that because it's going to make you feel sorrow, sorrowful, right? Uh-huh. But, but but you don't have any mercy or any grace with the brother or sister. But if somebody point out your stuff, you're going to become indignant, right? Well, be indignant, right? Because here's what Yahweh says. Here's his way, right? Uh, it says to loose the bands of wickedness and to, uh, and to undo, undo the heavy burdens. Mm-hmm. What he says, come to me, all ye that labor, <laughs> right? And our heavy burden, right? And I, and he will give us what rest? This is a rest. This is a solemn, a Shabbat of rest. Mm -hmm. A covenant of rest. And to let the oppressed, the downpressed go free. Right? Let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Right? Isn't this... This is, this is what he wants us to do, right? This is the atonement state of mind, right? Is it not, verse seven, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? To give them, so how can it be fast if we give it to the hungry? So we're going to tell the hungry people, right, who already have less than us, that they need the fast too, right? You, you see how wicked that is? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, the poor, those who've been cast out. So it's no biggie. If we do what is in compliance with his will, doesn't Yeshua says when we have done all that we're to do, right? That we just say that we're unprofitable servants just doing what we was commanded to do instead of saying, let me break my arm and pat myself on the back, right? Wrong, right? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, right? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him or her, right? And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, right? From your own people, right? In other words, we do these things, the so-called black on black stuff, you know, all that black on black. We talk about how other people treat us. But when we look at how we treat ourselves, we always make some excuse. Well, you don't understand. Well, you have to understand. Well, you don't understand. Well, you got to understand. Verse 8 says, then, 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 if we do this, then, and when we do it, it will be then, then shall thy light break forth, right? Then shall thy light 
right, break forth as a morning. And thy health, thy taina, and taina yistalin, thy health, thy shalom, shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, right, before thee. The glory of Yahweh shall be thy re-reward shall be thy re-reward. And what's the glory? What does this matter to teach us? For my part, I glory in the Bible. Well, what's the glory of Yahweh? The word and the truth, right? That is contained in the scripture in spirit and in truth. Then shalt thou call. Then when we say, yeah, right? Then shalt thou call and Yahweh shall answer. Thou shall cry and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, right, put in these yokes, right, put in these yokes, right, enslaving one another, the putting forth of the finger, right, and you did this, and you did that, and you, 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 right, and the speaking vanity, speaking nonsense, speaking nonsense, it's vanity, if it's not his word, it's vain, right, you can feel it all you want, it's, it's his logic, he's the logos, right, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. So, so notice he's flipping the whole, this whole fasting paradigm that the Jews who call themselves Jews, right? And according to the new covenant, right? It wasn't these the same religious folks. So the religious folks are telling you, right? Oh, you need to fast. And a lot of people are probably saying, yeah, I'm getting ready to fast. I'm getting ready to fast. You've been taught wrong, not too fast, right? It says, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as noonday. And Yahweh shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. In drought. Ain't that something? They said that there's a drought coming. He, but he'll satisfy I and I soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. So look how Babylon is. They tell, oh, get spring water. You know, and so you get to confuse. You, you think when you hear spring of water, the first thing you're thinking about is the counterfeit and not the real. This is the real. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in the paths, the real paths, right? The real paths of I and I liberty, right? So we can see this right here, right? We can see this right here, right? This is, this is the way, right? This is the way. This is the truth, right? The return, the teshuva, right? Is it about fasting? Well, what is the fast that he has chosen? It's not like the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. Right. This is the message right here for this one right here. Verse 13, it says, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. That's why some of y'all can't really keep the Sabbath of the Sabbath because you, you haven't really dealt with yourself. You're not really looking at yourself. You know, you might say, oh, I can't do this because the Sabbath day and you you stressed out. You're not, not receiving his barakat and wonder, well, how come this one receives or has? Oh, they must be taking something I have. No, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight. The holy of Yahweh, honorable. And shall honor him, not doing thine own ways nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. This is how we're supposed to keep the Shabbat, right? But I'm sure some will be like the pharisaical mind. They'll find a way, you know, to point their finger, right, at their, you know, at their brother or sister, you know, instead of taking that beam out of their own eye, right? But that's why you're stumbling, right? That's why you're off-ended. Oh, this is offend me. Yeah, well, it should offend you because you're off-ended. Don't, don't come in his name and come and come incorrect. None of us should. 
This is why this word is so important. I give thanks that he has shown me this. Cause I was like, wait, something about this fasting thing is not clicking, right? And the, and the spirit said, look at what it says in the word. Did I say fast? Who said fast? Don't be so fast, right? Then shalt thou delight thyself in yod hey weh and he who be who he be. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov, the real heritage. You know, something that we got to restore our heritage to ourselves. No, he does it. You see, he does it. You see, we're following that old way that get, that got us astray to begin with. When we do that, we have to come out of that, you know, that, 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 that mind, right? Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of our mind. This is what's afflicting our self, our way of looking at it, right? And see it his way and not our way. See it Yahweh and not our way. See it in Yah's thoughts and not our own thoughts. He says he will cause thee. He will cause us to do what? To ride, Right upon the high places of the earth, and he will do what he will feed I and I with what the heritage of Yaakov, thy father, the heritage of Jacob, thy father, the heritage of Jacob, I and I father, for the mouth of Yahweh, of he who be who he be, has spoken it, right? Have spoken it. So, brothers and sisters, right. We're not to fast as they fast, right? right? We're not to fast their way. We're supposed to fast Yah's way, right? And he tells us in chapter 58 of Isaiah, right? He lays it down for us in chapter 58 of Isaiah, as well as what Paul reminds us of in 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7. And, and, and 11 is, is the key verse right there. 7, 11, right? Um, and some call this the heart of, uh, Paul right here, right? Cause he begins off having, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let I and I cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness, kedisana, in the fear or the reverence, the respect. That's what we say. I don't respect none of these things, men and people. If you say respect, give me respect. If you give me respect, oh, you get respect. No, whatever. I respect Jah, right? I'll honor the brethren. You know, I honor. See, honor is the key thing, is the key thing for one for another, especially. But that reverence, that, that fear, that teferi, right? Right? Is for Abba Father in Yeshua. Right. Because we we fear, right, losing his love and, and, and his his righteousness. Right. Not men and people. Uh, res respect of people is, is, is fear of people. So you got to watch that word. Watch how you use that word. Check your rise. Check yourself. He said, receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you. For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia or Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Amen. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, Elohim Baruchu, that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by sending comforted us by the coming of Tito, or it says Titus, but Tito, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us of, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, right? The mourning, right? That's a part of the afflicting of our soul. The, what says the mourning, where are we right here? Your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. 
for though I made you sorry with a letter. Right. And some some people I know have been offended by some of the vids. You know, I like that, but I didn't like that video. Right there. So I might have made you sorry with a vid or with a letter. I do not repent. I don't change my mind on it, though. I did repent. You know, at first you hear someone's offended by teaching. You're like, oh, man, I did repent for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry. Though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that you ye sorrowed to repentance. That the sorrow that you go through, if you hear something that might offend you, that hopefully in the will, right, and the spirit of Abba Father, that will bring you to the repentance. You'll see it for yourself. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. It was not personal that ye might receive damage by us in nothing, right? For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Because furthermore, he talked about those, the love of money, you know, the love of money and stuff like that. You know, what happened, all those evils. And then he talked about the sorrow, this, you know, that that brings on them. And Yeshua speaks about that in the parable about those, uh, uh, by the, the thorns, the thorn bushes, you know, like uh, the kids of this world, it choked the word, right? It choked the word. The ones who have potential to do, they get caught up on those things because they have not sorrowed after that godly manner. For behold, this self same thing that ye sorrowed for after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourself, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Wherefore, though I wrote to you, I did it not for this cause that had done the wrong nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of Elohim might appear to you. Oh, I love this right here. Because sometimes you get a situation among two brothers, brethren or two sisterin or, or two, among two people, right? And like he says right here, he says, it's, uh, for, it's not for the cause that, of the one who did the wrong. Because you might say, oh, that one was wrong. The brother, sister, that, they were wrong. Nor for the cause of the one who allegedly suffered the wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, might appear to you, right? In other words, people say, whose side are you on? You on my side? Oh, no, you on his side? Or no, you on her side? You know, playing that game? No, I'm doing this in the sight of Elohim, right? You just want to, you know, uh, comfort yourself, your own rise. But what you need to do is, 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 is afflict yourself. Right. After that godly manner, check yourself. Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort. Yea, and exceeding the more joy we for the joy of Tito, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For I, for if I have boasted in anything to you, uh, anything uh, to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth. Even so, our boasting, which I made before Tito, is found a truth. Last two verses right here. And his inward affection is more abundant towards you, whilst he remembered the obedience of you all. The obedience to what? The obedience of the gospel, the good news. And this good news that we preach in Moshiach. All right? Amen. Um. How with fear and trembling, right, ye received him, right, in the true spirit of Kedisana, right, you know, not in that, you know, uh, that selfishness. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Amen. Amen. So. Our fast is not like their fast, basically. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 58 really makes that really so clear. And it puts the context of the fast for I and I, right? Or, or, or put the context of, of afflicting our soul, 
right? But he clearly shows that there was, even at this time, this thought, right, of, well, when Yahweh says afflict the soul, that means fasting, right? That means just like fasting from physical food. That's why it says that the kingdom of heaven is not about food and drinks, right? You, you know that verse right there where it speaks to us about the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of heaven about, right? Is the kingdom of heaven about food, right? Is the kingdom of heaven about drinks, right? What does the word say the kingdom of heaven is about? Let's see if we, uh, if we can, um, or eating rather, you know, as they say, eating and drinking, right? Eating and drinking, right? And that's the way the, the Jews who call themselves Jews, right? You know, um, have approached, have approached this, right? And that's the way that is actually, uh, reproved, right? Um, in the scriptures, right? That's so clearly reproved by, you know, by the scriptures that it's not about eating and drinking. You can even see in some of the, the examples, right? Um, that Yeshua gave and how they said that he was a glutton. You remember how they were saying that he was a glutton, right? Um, and he was a wine bibber and all of that. That's kind of interesting via too, because you have to say, well, was he supposed to be fasting, right? You know, um, at that time, right? You know, uh, you know, what, it, what was going on right then, you know, and why was that so emphasized as it is in the gospels, you know, why was that so emphasized in the gospels, um, um, concerning the Pharisees saying of Yeshua that, you know, he can't really be the one because he's, he was not following, right? He was not following their, uh, their tradition, right? You know, their tradition. Well, of course he was not following, you know, their tradition, right? You know, why would he be following their tradition? Because their tradition was wrong, right? Their tradition was, was totally wrong. Romans 14 and 17, it, it reminds us right here, in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of Elohim, of God, if you please, is not meat and drink, but it's what? Righteousness. Who is our righteousness? Yeshua HaMoshiach. How has he demonstrated that righteousness? Right? By being our lamb. Right? By being the lamb, the Seha Elohim. And peace. Well, can, can we have shalom without having peace? True righteousness? No, we can't. This is why many people are not in the true state of shalom, because they first have to recognize that he is our righteousness, not their self-righteousness. And joy, it says, in the Holy Spirit. And it's joy in the Holy Spirit. You'll find this in Romans chapter 14, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 14 right here. Romans chapter 14. We're going to try to post this up ASAP. Right. Because, you know, we're, you know, our soul has been afflicted and still is afflicted, you know. Um, yeah, because the, the law of love concerning doubtful things. Right. And when, when there's something that is not specified in his word. Right. We should really be careful. Right. To start to make up our own laws. Right. And should exercise the law of love. But the law of love has to be based on for for God, Elohim, so love the world. And he so loved us as the once lost now found Beta Israel in sending us Moshiach in sending us his dearly beloved son. Right. So it says for the kingdom of Elohim is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Ruach HaKadosh for he that in these things serveth Ha Moshiach is acceptable to Elohim and approved of men. Make I and I therefore follow after the things which make for Shalom and the things wherewith one may edify another, truly build up another, not in our own way of mind because we have all this worldly experience or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, but it's, it's, we build them up in his way, truth and life for meat, right? Or food destroy not the work of Elohim. 
All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. I thought that they were just talking right here about whether eating vegetables or meat, because it's very clear that Hawaii Apollos, Paul, was inclined to being a vegan. And you can see this in this chapter, chapter 14, very interesting, right? He said, it is good neither to eat flesh or to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. That is good to just abstain from all of that. Has thou faith, the imuna, have it to thyself, right? Have it to thyself before Elohim. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. That's all it says to in meekness to instruct those who oppose themselves, right? If peradventure, right, Elohim would give them uh, repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Verse 23 says, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat. In other words, it's talking about the doubt, right? That doubt right there, because he eats if not of faith, for whatsoever is not of emuna is chatiyat. Whatsoever is not of faith. Now, before one twist this out of context, read the whole chapter, because what uh, Paul is saying right here, there was a controversy about whether to be vegan or whether to make scant use of, of animal flesh. You know, like some people might eat a little fish, right? And some Rastafari, oh, I don't, I don't cut fish. That, that is. So they, they, they have so much passion and zeal for the animal and not the one who has taken away that type and given us righteousness and peace through him to the glory of our father, the king of kings. You know what I'm saying? If something is mixed up, something is out of balance, something is wrong. And we pray at this time that you may receive his shalom and his righteousness. Brothers and sisters, I want to get into this season, but about the fast to fast or not to fast, right? This is what this is. Uh, this is what this is about right here. All right. So the fast, it doesn't say fast at all. It says afflict, afflict thy soul. Right. And the first afflict is um, to, um, in a sense, um, uh, sorrow. In that sense, sorrow or stress yourself for his sake. Right. Recognizing, man, I like to do this. But he says this. Oh, it's the stress. You see, it's easy just to just to you know, say, well, I'm not going to think about that and do my own thing. Or it's easy, you know what I mean? It's easy not to not to stress yourself. Don't think on those things, right? But that creates uh, negative altars for other sacrifices. Don't go there. All right, shalom, ras, tefari, right? But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou judge or condemn thy sister? Right? Or why dost thou set at naught, set like nothingness, your brother? Why do you treat your sister like she's nothing? For I and I shall all stand before the judgment seat of Moshiach. Shalom.